Hi everybody, welcome back to the Retro Ghetto and today we're going to be taking a look at more video games that I've completed thus far this year. Okay, so it's that time again. These are probably the favourite videos that I do on this channel. I love talking about the games that I've played through. I don't necessarily do reviews on this channel, but this gives me an opportunity to do a brief review on each game that I've completed thus far and tell you whether I recommend it or not. Um, what I've tried to do differently this year from last year with my game completed tally is give it a score out of 10. Um, as I say, this is part two now. We've been busy this year. Um, so just to recap, anyone that hasn't seen my first video, um, that is the games I've played and completed thus far, and that's the score that I've given to them all. If you are interested, obviously go back to my previous video if you want to hear anything more about those games in a little bit more depth. But yeah, I've got six more games completed this episode to talk about, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited to talk about some of these games. So uh, yeah, let's not mess about, let's get into it. Okay, so the first game that I completed um, following the last video was Metal Slug 4. Um, on the PlayStation 2. Normally what I do is I show you the physical copy, but as you guys know, I keep it on about it, I've packed everything away. Literally what you see behind me is all that's left. The other side of the camera is, it looks like a cross between a sale date at Primark and walking into TK Maxx on a Saturday afternoon. There's shit everywhere. So literally everything's packed except for what you see behind me and that's going to be getting packed this week as well. So yeah, normally I show you the physical copy of these games, but sadly I can't do that on this episode. But uh, yeah, Metal Slug 4, I mean, video games should inherently be made so you can have fun, right? And that's what Metal Slug does. It, it just, it just screams fun. It's like whoever sat around and developed the idea, they just sat there and said, right, let's get our child's brains on and let's make this game as fun as we can. Let's make grown men smile. And uh, they achieve it brilliantly. The graphic style holds up brilliantly on the PlayStation 2, which can't be said for a lot of PlayStation 2 titles, let's be honest. Some of that early 3D work um, doesn't quite um, map over to today's standards. But the 2D art style, the pixelated art style that they went for is fantastic. Um, it's one of them games where you can't really get a game over. You continually die as you go through. Um, and I think it's more about trying to complete the game. And the replayability comes from seeing if you can die less times on your next playthrough. Because you will die. Uh, and that was probably one of my negatives with the game. It was difficult. As much as it is about just playing it and having fun and it's quite mindless. You can just pick up and play. I never felt like I had to gain any skills. I never got good at it, if you like. Um, it was just a case of press the fire button and die a couple of times. But eventually you'll shoot the bad guy enough that he'll die and you'll move on. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure if there's, you just keep playing it, there are complexities to the game and to get better at it and to, as I say, to minimise that death count. I think I died about 28 times or something, so there'd definitely be work for me to be uh, to do there. But it's the first Metal Slug game that I've played in the series. Apart from picking it up and messing about in arcades and on holiday in Spain as a kid, they always seem to be on those uh, arcade machines there, don't they, when you go abroad. It's the first one I've sat down and played all the way through. And it's just a great time. If you want to pass a couple of hours in a great way, can't recommend Metal Slug enough. And I definitely want to play through a lot more of the games in the franchise now. Um, if I was going to give the game a score, I'd give it a 7. And it's a strong 7. Um, I mean, it's not going to rewrite the rule books to what gaming is, but it's just a good time. Start! What I will say now before we go into the next game is what I probably should have already said um, is just for, especially for people that are watching these sort of videos for the first time. When I say I'm completing a video game, I'm not a completionist. I don't mean I've got a platinum trophy. I don't mean I've got every single collectible. I've not done it on every difficulty setting. What I mean is I've played through the meat and potatoes. I've played through the storyline of the game. I've seen the end credits if you like. And unless stated otherwise, I do it always on the medium or standard difficulty. So just want to get that out there. 
um, before we move on to the second game, which is... Ooh, this one could be contentious. The second game I completed is Demon's Crest, which um, I don't have physically. It's silly money, that game, uh, on the Super Nintendo. Now, I was able to play this via the Switch uh, eShop, so I'm sure you're seeing some footage of me playing that now. Another thing I'd like to say before we go any further is the video footage that I've captured for this video, um, I didn't do it as I was going through the games. I did it um, prior to making this video. So if I look like I'm shit at games, I'm not saying I'm not shit, but I look even more shit based on this. Because you know when you go back to games, you forget how to play them. And you load it up at quite a late level and you're like, what the hell am I doing? So yeah, if I look terrible, I am terrible, but not that terrible, right? <laughs> but yeah, Demon's Crest. I think I expected a bit too much from this one, if I'm being honest. Um, largely because it's a Capcom game, and this was Capcom in their prime, you know, the 16-bit era, the Super Nintendo days. And also because of the huge fee that this game commands if you were to buy it physically complete in box for the Super Nintendo. Now, I know that um, value and a game being good doesn't always go hand in hand, but I think in the back of my mind, I just assumed it would be a very good game because of the price it commands. Now, by no means was it a bad game. Um, the, the graphics are nice. I just didn't in any way think it was anything different. There was nothing about it that would make me want to play it again. And I found it very short. Um, I completed it in a few hours. It, it always is slightly different when you play on a software like a Switch because you've got game saves now and your save states where you can just sort of save the game anywhere you like, which inherently makes the game easier. But I didn't think it was very difficult. I didn't get the replayability from it, as I say. Uh, and whilst it was an enjoyable platformer, it was just very um, average, if you like. It's got all the polish of a Capcom game, but there was nothing in there that really stuck with me and that I'll take with me going forwards or will think about playing the game again. So I know quite a few people like this game. I scored it a six um, because, as I say, just middling to average. Okay, so the next game I played through was one that took a bit more of my time, and it was a, a more modern title, and that was Uncharted 4. Um, the only other Uncharted game that I played through from start to finish was Uncharted 2, which is a fantastic game. Uh, and whilst I dabbled in the others, I just never played through them um, fully at the time of their release. So yeah, I'd heard a lot of good things about Uncharted 4, and the reason that I really wanted to play it was that I'd heard it's quite short. And I'm one of the people that doesn't like to have to put 30, 40, 50, 60 hours into all these modern AAA games. So it was music to my ears when I heard people saying it was a bit too short. Um, the game itself is fantastic and I understand why people love it. The polish is awesome. It really is a AAA title in very definitive AAA title. You know, it's what you'd expect from such a large game. So polished, so clean. The storyline was brilliant. I really enjoyed the storyline. My favourite element of the game was the actual shooting. Every now and again you'd enter um, a certain phase of the game where you'd have to sort of clear out the enemies before you could move on. And I think that's when the game really shines. Um, I thought the combat was fantastic. All the different guns and weapons that are, are available are all different and very fun to use. I've always been a sniper rifle guy. Um, it's almost like a bit of a cheat code, I think. If you get a sniper rifle, um, I always hold on to it and I always find it the easiest way to pass through that part of the level. I just hide and pop people off. Maybe that says more about me as a person than it does uh, about uh, Nathan Drake. But um, yeah, I think it was a great climax. I won't spoil it if no one here has played it. Um, yeah, great climax to the story. If I did have any negatives to say about it, um, there was a little bit too much platforming. Now, I'm a platforming guy. I love platformers. But the platforming felt a bit generic, a bit long-winded and a bit tiresome at times. I understand that games have to be paced and it can't always be 100 mile an hour. Not every game can be Doom. But because the combat was so good, when you then go from that to 20 minutes to half an hour of jump into this ledge, reach to the next ledge. Oh, there's another ledge, another convenient. There's always conveniently placed stones on these walls, isn't there, for Nathan Drake? It's a bit like the Tomb Raider game. I just thought there was a little bit too much of that. At times it got boring. I was like, let's just get through this, you know. Um, and get to the next cutscene or the next um, combat. But that's that's a bit of a nitpick because it really is a fantastic game. Um, I enjoyed my time with it. It didn't outstay its welcome. Uh, and I scored it an eight and a half. There it is. Another treasure in the palm of my hand. 
How many chances at a normal life have I thrown away? And in the end, one question remains. No! Was it all worth it? Okay, so this next game, um, the first time I tried it, I couldn't get on with it. Now, for me, it's, it's quite indicative of that uh, mental process when it comes to selecting a game. Because I've done this a few times now, and I'm sure some of you guys have as well, where you put a game in and you're just not feeling it. I just don't think it's the right time mentally. Like, for example, I can't play a Metroidvania and then play another Metroidvania. I can't play a triple world open, uh, sorry, a triple A open world game, which is huge and takes 50 hours of my time, and then go straight into another one. I'm just not ready for it. So I tend to bounce around between old school, new school, platformers, sports titles, you know, just to give myself a break from certain genres. So the first time I tried this game, I couldn't get on with it. And then I put it down for months. Um, the game is Celeste. Okay. Now, the reason why I picked this up was um, it's all tied around mental health. This game, okay, it's a lot. The, the main character has some mental health issues, as does everybody within the game. Now, I can't speak for everybody, but I think a lot of us will agree that during this, uh, this situation and the pandemic we find ourselves in, and being in our third lockdown here in the UK, no matter how big or how small, I'm sure a lot of us have had some degree of mental health um, dip, decline um, over this last year or so. Um, there's no shame in talking about that. In fact, we should be talking about it. So I just, it kind of dawned on me one day. I was sitting at home and I was thinking, mm, you know, I wasn't at my best, shall we say. And um, I just thought it was a good time to give it another go. And this was mentally the right time. Let me tell you, I fell in love with this game. Um, I don't know how I didn't the first time, but uh, I loved everything about this game. I fell in love with the character. Um, the art style. I think um, one of the beauties of me making these lists and scoring them, it, it sort of reaffirms what my favourite genres are because I can see similarities in some of the games, but we'll probably talk about that towards the end of the video. But yeah, it's millimetre perfect platforming on t at times. It's not many enemies to kill. It's more about you um, against the environment, which again is intrinsically linked to the mental health aspect of things. And what this game does brilliantly is it gives you a sense of feeling. Some of these stages you'll find yourself in are so stressful. Like just the music, the environment, the, um, the things within the environment that will kill your character. Um, unless you're perfect with your platforming, you're jumping, etc. And then you'll go from that to very serene, very relaxed, beautiful, bright colours, open skies, um, soft music. And they did such a good job of taking you on this mental health journey. You're not only playing it through her eyes, but it almost brings you into the world itself. Um, I can see why this game got so many accolades. Um, they did an absolutely fantastic job with this. And again, what is very important to me as a gamer, it was a perfect length. It didn't outstay its welcome. I think it was just the right length and it sort of peaked. And even the metaphoric climbing of a mountain because your, your goal your aim in this game is to climb the mountain and uh yeah you just feel like you're on that journey and you can feel yourself getting closer and closer to the top and then there'll be falls as is life as is with the mental health struggle and that's it all ties in together it's so clever it's one of those games that me i could talk about it i could make an hour-long video but i really can't find the superlatives that are going to explain this game to you you have to play it for yourself it's one of those games that i can't recommend enough Play it for yourself. You'll probably have your own journey with it. I think everybody can see some of their life or some of their mental struggles in this game. And um, yeah, I just loved every minute of it. Um, it's one of the most epic boss fights I've ever had in gaming. If you've played through the game, you know what I'm talking about. It doesn't come towards the end of the game. It comes probably two thirds of the way in. And again, indicative of life and the lessons this game is teaching the biggest struggle is from within. The, the big boss fight is against yourself. You have to play the game to know what I'm talking about, but let me tell you, it genuinely is one of the most epic boss fights I've ever had. And it was so satisfying to finally uh, win that fight. Um, but yeah, I gave Celeste a nine out of 10. 
and there's also replayability. As I say, I just played through the game, I played through the story, I saw the credits, but you can go back into this game, you can collect what are, I think, the strawberries throughout the game that are quite hard to attain uh, in a normal run, and there's more collectibles throughout, and then you can be rewarded with more stages uh, should you open up more rewards throughout the game. So, you know, excuse me, the replayability is there. Um, it really is a fantastic game, and it's one of them games that will stay with me for a long time. And I give Celeste a 9 out of 10, and I recommend anybody that hasn't to give it a go. Okay, so as per the script, I completely changed the pace. So I went from um, Celeste to... The only link is that this game stresses me out. I don't know why I did it to myself. I completed it a few years ago. Never completed it as a child. I don't know why I thought it'd be a good idea to do it again. And that's Mario Lost Levels. So I'm sure you all know the story behind this. Um, it's part of the Mario All-Stars cartridge for the Super Nintendo. You get Mario 1, 2, 3 and Lost Levels. Lost Levels was what was supposed to be Mario 2. Um, the Japanese audience um, didn't think those Westerners were capable, which we probably wasn't. It, it, to be fair to them, I don't think I'd ever had the know-how to beat this game as a child. In fact, I know I didn't, because I never beat it as a child. Um, we got a different game as Mario 2, which is why Mario 2 is so different to the other three in the trilogy. But yeah, I thought I'd give Mario Lost Levels a blast. Now I'm a grown man. Now I'm a cultured gamer. Experienced. I'll fly through it. God, this game's frustrating. Um, the thing about Mario Lost Levels is it's not like Mario Sunshine, which I spoke about in my last video, where it just pisses me off because the game's broken. The game's not broken in any way. It's just difficult, and it's just frustratingly difficult. Um, you have to be so millimetre perfect um, to get through these levels. The first half of the game is somewhat easy. You can fly through it. But boy, them last couple of worlds are, um, yeah, they're a real challenge. And I died a lot, <laughs> a hell of a lot, to uh, to get it done. But I um, stuck with it, got through it, and um, yeah, that's the second time. And I think probably the last time I'll be playing through Mario Lost Levels, to be honest. Mario Lost Levels is like Mario Maker before Mario Maker was a thing. You know, there's people now that make crazy levels that are really difficult. That's what Mario Lost Levels was to at my generation as a child. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to knock on this game. I've given it a 7 out of 10. And the reason being is, if that was the only Mario game ever made, you'd probably praise it and say it's a brilliant game because it's polish and it's finesse and, you know, all the Mario, Mario-ness, if you like, that comes with it. Because you can only help compare it but to 1, 2 and 3 and um, Super Mario Land, it's very difficult to score it higher because I know what Mario games can be. So yeah, I'm going to give it a 7. Um, I've got it done, but uh, I don't think I'll be doing it again. Okay, so the last game on the list, one that I've recently completed. Um, this is a game that I've had in the back of my mind to complete for a long time because I hear so many people talk about it. A lot of people absolutely love this game and they hold it on such a pedestal that um, I always knew it was one that I would be playing someday. Um, I didn't have it physically because it's become very expensive. Um, I'd had the chance once as well and I passed up on it for a good price. And once I do that as a collector, I find it very difficult to then pay more than that opportunity that I missed out on. So yeah, I don't think I'll ever own it. But I managed to buy it on the Xbox 360 on that uh, the eShop there, if that's what you want to call it. And uh, I actually paid through it on my Xbox One. Um, and that is Symphony of the Night. Um, so yeah, the irony is I bought an Xbox One X. And the only game I've really played on it 
from my, on my most modern, most powerful console is uh, Symphony of the Night from what around turn of the millennium time. So there you go. I think that probably says it all about me or about the Xbox One. But uh, yeah, so I played through Symphony of the Night and I had a good time. Um, maybe I'd overhyped it in my head because of how highly people speak about it. Maybe as a young man, if I played it at the time on the PlayStation 1, I would have been more wowed by the game. Because um, probably a lot of the mechanics and fundamentals in this game that I've seen and done a lot, because I like my Metroidvanias, they were probably done for the first time in this game. But I can only judge things uh, through my eyes and my experience with it, and that's what I'm going to give to you guys. But I did enjoy it. Um, uh, there was once or twice, I'm not going to lie, I did look up. Um, I looked online, I think, on two occasions where I've just been walking around the map and just couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do next. So, full disclosure, a couple of times I did uh, have a quick Google, but only once, if not twice. You know, I did put the work in to get the game done, um, and I did enjoy my time with it. Mm, the feeling is fantastic. The ex Like with all Castlevania games, they create an ambience, like an eeriness, which uh, they do so well. And the character's so cool as well. I love the animations. I love the, the running. I love the walking. Um, like if you press what would be the equivalent of triangle, you do like a back shift. Um, and you can like moonwalk your way through levels. Um, some of the weapons is very, very cool. It's very cool. I think cool is the right word to use. Um, my biggest um, negative, I think, with this game would be the end boss. I, I was surprised it was finished. I didn't even know it was the end boss. I think with a lot of these kind of games, I'm guilty of getting power ups throughout the game, but not using them, saving them for this boss fight. Because in my head, I, I think tough days are coming. So I've got all these weapons, um, all these special weapons. I've got the best armor on the game, because obviously with a Metroidvania, you have to pretty much explore everywhere to progress. So you end up unlocking so much uh, armor and um, weapons and things. But by the time I reached the boss, it was so easy. Um, you know, I just, I didn't have to learn a skill. I didn't have to learn a pattern. I like old school games where I'm going to get beat by the boss 30 times, but, you know, by the 31st time, I know his pattern, I know his movements. I've perfected it. I feel like I've achieved something because I've learned the skill of how to beat that boss and I feel um, a sense of reward. Whereas with this game, it just kind of felt like, well, I'll just stand here and get hit as often as I want, but I'll just keep pressing punch. I've got the best armor in the game. I've got the most powerful weapon. Here's a couple of bombs and he's dead. And it was no real skill. Um, so yeah, when I defeated him, I was almost expecting him to sort of, you know, like a lot of boss, bosses will rise again and there'll be like a, a harder um, sort of boss, if you like, a harder mutation or there'll be more to it. But no, it, it died and the credits rolled. And I was a bit like, oh, that's it. Um, so the game definitely didn't outstay its welcome. I think it was the right length. I uh, really enjoyed that part of it. But I just think the end boss was just a little underwhelming for me. Um, there was no real payoff, um, in my opinion. But it is a very good game. Um, and obviously of its time, I'm sure it would have been fantastic. But I gave it an 8, which obviously is a very strong score. And uh, yeah, definitely would recommend Symphony of the Night. Your words are as empty as your soul. Mankind ill needs a savior such as you. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? But yeah, that's uh, my next six games. So I think that takes me to... How many games is that? Either 13 or 14 that we've completed this year. So there's the full list. That's the league table, if you like, of games I've completed in 2021. That's the current standings. Um... And I think, as I touched on before, doing this really makes you realise how um, you like a certain genre um, or a certain sort of game more than others. If I look at the top of my list, I look at Ori and I look at Celeste. They're very different games, but they also have similarities. They're very much um, old school games with modern ideas, if that makes sense. Uh, they're very platforming orientated. And uh, yeah, that must be a genre that I enjoy. I already knew that anyway, but I think that's just confirmation. So I'm really happy with the games I've completed thus far this year. Um, I should be moving just over a week now. So uh, my games that I'm getting through might slow down somewhat. It might be a bit longer before we get the next games completed video out, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, really enjoyed my gaming um, in 2021. Um, I'm 
In terms of my Sunday bonus videos that I've been putting out, I can't guarantee one this week, unfortunately, guys, because it's my last weekend to get everything packed. And as you can see, there's still a lot of shit to pack in this room, never mind the rest of the house. So uh, I'm going to try and put something out, but I can't promise there'll be anything this Sunday. But there will be Wednesday um, episode as normal, and there will be two episodes a week um, going on after that. So as always, I really appreciate everybody that's tuned in and stuck around. Um, if you haven't played any of these games um, and you're going to, let me know in the comments. Equally, if you disagree and you like to game or dislike to game more than I did, let me know why in the comments and uh, let's let's discuss it. That's what it's all about. So as always, thanks for watching. Play your games. Keep it retro. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you. Retro Ghetto. <laughs>